<coughs> Dr. Umi Kalsum Zokafi with her title Developing Digital Learning Resources Framework for Quantity Surveying Program in University Malaya. Please welcome Dr. Umi Kalsum. Uh, thank you, Professor Dr. Azhar. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you may start. Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. Uh, my name is Umika Sumitu Zulkafli. Okay. Uh, and together with me, there are other researcher, which is Associate Professor Dr. Nohanim Zakaria, Survey Imran Arif Yahya, Survey Dr. Lu Xiao Chuing, and Dr. Norma Dia Aziz. So today we are going to present our research outcome on the developing digital learning resources framework for quantity surveying program in University of Malaya. Basically, my presentation outline consists of the introduction, the problem statement, aim and objective, methodology and the outcome of the research. I'll start my presentation by giving the definitions of the digital learning resources. Okay, the digital learning resources refers to digital resources that engage students in learning activities and support student learning goals, for example, like applications, software, programs or the websites. And digital learning resources do not include any hardware or infrastructure needed to use the digital resources. When we uh, proposed this research topic, at first we thought that digital learning resources is focusing only on the academic content tools. However, we are wrong. After doing a very extensive literature, we found out that uh, uh, the digital learning resources can be divided into three, which is digital academic content tools, digital productivity tools, and digital communication tools. Digital academic content tools cons, uh, con, uh, consist of the resources that encourage students to learn academic content and skills. Whereas for the digital productivity tools, it's being used to plan, document, organize, and analyze content. And it does not contain any uh, academic content. Whereas for the digital communi communication tools, okay, uh, it's being used because of uh, uh, it being used uh, due to for, for communication, collaboration, network, or pre uh, present information, and also it does not have any, uh, it does not contain any academic content. And a little bit background about the uh, scenario that we are facing right now all over the world, whereby the global disruption caused by the coronavirus disease affect walks of life and education are no exceptions. And due to the uncertainty of the pandemic, educational institute need to shift to e-learning to e platform and modify the cost structure and curriculum. Efforts are ongoing to continue the educational mission in university level. And the sudden help that the, in the educa education mission due to this pandemic lead to an intense and fast exploration and implementation of creative ways to continue delivery of educational content remotely. And the educational institution in affected areas are seeking stopgap solution to continue searching where learning quality depends on the level of digital access and efficiency. So from the literature review, we come up with several issues whereby uh, in order for us to, uh, to create the problem statement, one of the issues is about the high expectation about the potential of the digital learning resources. And this is followed by the e-learning skill is not associated with classroom e-learning by Honan. And this is supported by Hutchinson and Woodward, uh, lacking of e-learning integration. And to chief, according to Leila, to chief majority of the course content to e-learning platforms and modify the course structure and curriculum. And the last one by Mohamed, the, the learning quality depends on the level of digital access and efficiency. So therefore, from that issue, we formulate, formulate our problem statement, whereby we can conclude that digital learning resources is very important to support the quality of education received by the students. So this is the research aim, the research question, and the research objective, whereby our research aim is to develop the digital learning resources framework for quantity surveying program. And from the research question, we formulate our research objective, whereby the first objective is to identify the digital learning resources adopted by the student in the quantity surveying program. Second objective is to investigate the challenges in adopting the digital learning resources. Third objective is to establish a solution in overcoming the challenges in adopting the digital learning resources. And the last objective is to develop a digital learning resources framework for quantity surveying program in University of Malaya. So this is the research method whereby we are, there, is, there are five steps involved uh, starting from the literature review, which is 
the step one. In the literature review, extensive uh, literature being done on the digital learning resources whereby we need to identify the variable for the digital learning resources. And on top of that, the variable for the challenges and the solution need to be established too. And for the second for, uh, step on the program structure, because we have a lot of subjects, so we need to identify what is the critical subject and our focus will be on the technical course subject. And from that technical course subject, we develop the course group. And step three involves the questionnaire development, whereby uh, the question will uh, have been developed from the literature review and the questionnaire survey being prepared uh, and been given to the students. Step four is on the data collection, whereby Google form, Google form and Excel sheet is being used. And the last step will be on the data analysis, whereby we are using the SPSS and descriptive statistic. So uh, uh, on the variable for the digital learning resources, because uh, like I mentioned before, that we have three categories, uh, digital academic content tools consists of two variable references, resources, and online da database. For the digital productivity tools, we have six variables, presentation and publication tools, text processing tools, report writing tools, data analysis, analysis tool, virtual reality tools, and information organization tools. Whereas for the digital communication tools, we have group messaging apps, email, journals, or blog, video conferencing, project management tools, and collaborations. And for the program structure, because of uh, we uh, under quantity spring program, we have a total of 126 credit, uh, which involved with total sub, uh, 42 uh, total subjects. And out of 42, we have nine uh, university subject and uh, 33 faculty subject. So out of 33 faculty subject, we focus on the to uh, technical subject, which is 24 subjects. And this is, if you look at, at the uh, structure of the questionnaire, okay, uh, there are four sections involved where, whereby it started with the demography of the data and then followed with the, followed with the digital learning resources in the QS program, whereby under the section two, okay, we have uh, grouped it and, uh, to nine category, whereby every single category we ask about the digital learning resources that being used in that particular subject. And the uh, step three, uh, the section three, we involve with the challenges in the digital learning resources. And section four involved with the uh, solutions to overcome the challenges. Okay, the course group been divided into nine category. Uh, for the first category, uh, uh, the course group is on the measurement of quantities, whereby there are around five subjects involved in this category. For group two, construction technology, there are four uh, main subjects involved. For the group, Three, construction economies, two subjects. For the group construction law and contract, there are three subjects uh, in this category. For the category five, professional practices, there are two subjects. For the category six, construction management, there are two subjects. And for the uh, group seven, building services, there are two involved with the two subjects. IT and computer, two subjects. Analysis of prices and costing, two subjects. And populations, okay, we have around 128 students from the year one, year two, and year three. And according to Craig and Morgan, 1970, the population size of 120 to 30 required around 92 to 97 respondents. So therefore, in this uh, research, uh, we, uh, we take the whole population as our sample. And the response that we receive is around 91 respondent, and the response rate is 71.09%. And, and the sample size was sufficient as the response gathered were above 30%, as we mentioned by Sakaran and Bugi, Finkham, Yoon, and Trumbo. So this is the data on the demographic whereby we have, we have categorized it into a female and female, which semester, years of study and knowledge on the uh, digital learning resources. Okay, and this is the information we would like to know. Where did we, do the student get the information about the digital learning resources? And from this uh, questionnaire, we found out that uh, the student get to know about the digital learning resources from their lecturers and their friends. 
Okay, and this is the analysis on every category of the digi digital learning resources, okay, and we test it on the every single group of the subject offered in the quantities bearing program, okay. And for the item number one, digital academic content tools, uh, focusing on the references and resources, we found out that for the category group uh, SB1, SB2, and SB3 together with the SB7 and SB8, okay, YouTube is the most popular uh, reference or resource sources too. And then for the other group, uh, uh, group subject, subject, okay, we've uh, found out that SB3, SB4, SB5, SB6 together with SB, SB9, okay, research, research gate is the most popular reference or resources for that particular uh, group subjects, okay. However, we evaluate the whole things and we come up with the summary that uh, we rank it and we uh, uh, we found out that YouTube, UM Digital Library, ResearchGate, Academia, and JKR are the frequently visited website uh, by the student in the quantities weighing program. Okay, similar like the, uh, for, for the uh, result on the digital academic content tools on the online database, it was uh, found that uh, for the uh, course group uh, category SB1, they they more refer to they they would like they like to refer to saga journals, whereas for any uh, for other uh, course group, they ref, they they love to refer to sign direct. And however, in the total, okay, uh, we found out that sign. Science Direct, Springer, Emerald, Saga Journals, and Ibesco are the frequently visited online data database for the QS program uh, by the students. And this is the information on the digital productivity tools on the publication tools. It can be seen here that PowerPoint online and Google slide is the most popular thing being, that being used by the student in all of the subjects. And uh, uh, on top of that two particular uh, publication tools, okay, uh, they also use EndNote, Canva, Lincoln, and SlideShare, okay? And this is for the uh, result on the words and text processing tools, whereby, okay, for measurement subject here, we can see that Google Drive is the most popular tools, whereas for other subject, it is more towards on the Microsoft Word. So therefore, we conclude that Microsoft Word, Google Drive, and Google Document are the frequently used text processing tools for the QS program in UM. Whereas for the report writing, okay, uh, turning in is the most frequently used report writing tools for the program, okay. And this is the information on the digital productivity tools on the data analysis, okay. And your student love to use the Microsoft Excel and the Google Sheets. Uh, however, for one subject, SB8, one, one course subject, okay, uh, Revit is being used due to the nature of that particular subject because that subject is meant for the IT uh, subjects. And for the virtual reality software, this is we found out something that need to be improved, maybe something that need to be informed to the student that they, uh, uh, not only that they can use the virtual reality in a measurement subject, but they can also use this virtual reality in any other subject, for example, in the construction technology, or could be in the professional practice and so on. Uh, so however, the summary of the virtual reality uh, software, we found out that Unity, Twin Motion and Unreal Engine 4 are equally used uh, virtual, as a virtual reality software. And on the information on the organization tools, okay, most of the subject agreed to, uh, 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 student uh, uh, like to use the Google Drive. And on the digital communication tools on the group message, messages, okay, uh, apps, okay, uh, so the WhatsApp is considered the most popular apps as compared to other uh, messaging apps. And on the emails, it found, uh, we found that Gmail is the, is the most frequent used email for the QS program in UM. And for the online journal blogs, only one responder referred to the uh, online journals, whereby it shows that online and project management tool is not that popular. However, for uh, the project management tool is actually is very good tools, whereby I think a uh, lecturer might need to introduce about these tools to the student after, uh, after these findings. Okay, on the video conferencing, it shows that Google Hangouts, Meet and Zoom are the frequently used. Whereas for the collaboration tools, it shows that Google Documents and Quips uh, is the most frequently used uh, uh, as a collaboration tools. 
And on the challenges faced in digital learning resources, okay, uh, we have categorized the uh, challenges and we found out that the top three challenges is on the lack of skills to use the apps or software, okay, and suffer software problem due to, uh, uh, lagging due to the heavy load and the lack of financial capacity. Uh, capacity. And one challenge be included by the respondent whereby inability to assess certain online resources, whereby that one we also take uh, into consideration. And on the solution to overcome the challenges, we found out that universities to, sub, to, to subscribe more software for the usage of lecturer and students uh, being ranked as a top ranking, okay? And this is followed by the proposed free classes for chosen software to provide guidance and improve skills, and then followed by the financial support from the government to purchase software. And, uh, on top of that, because we, ha we have an open-ended question whereby uh, the, the student can give their opinion on the uh, what kind of other solution that, they, that, can, that can contribute to solve the problem, to solve the challenges uh, among the, the solutions given, okay? So this is the mind mapping. Uh, we have mapping the challenges and the, uh, the, the solutions. And this is the digital learning resources general framework whereby we have to take into consideration the quantities being program, the digital, digital learning resources and the challenges and together with other uh, uh, variables. And we have developed nine individual framework for each cost group. This is for the quantities of measurements. This is for the second cost group, construction technology. This is for the construction economics. This is for the construction law and contract, professional practice, construction management, uh, building services, IT and computer uh, analysis of uh, prices and costing, and this is the thing uh, from uh, how did how digital digital learning framework can assist the student. So the student can identify the appropriate resources, provide additional knowledge, assist the student to visualize the relation of the cost group and dig digital learning resources, assist the student to choose the appropriate digital learning resources, and allow the student to grow effectively on self-directed learning skills. So this is how the resources framework can assist the lecturer, whereby the, the lecturer can make a decision on the best platform to use the teaching and learning, and also uh, engaging more interesting activities and uh, can plan uh, weekly and designing the program structure and so on. And this is the final thoughts that we have that uh, uh, the university uh, can, promote, can promote our university readiness for new curriculum, better teaching, learning and student engagement. The university, especially library, can use this information to subscribe the most important database, apps and software. And the framework will help the university to support services to better respond to identify department and lecturer professional development needs. So uh, I would like to say thank you to Academy uh, uh, ADAC, Department of QS, student of Quantity Spain Department and our research assistant, Puan Masara Mamo. And with that, I would like to 